Alrighty. Who wants to start tonight? Ruby, I'm just going to ask the really obvious question. You had two goals on Saturday. I'm going to say three assists tonight, even though I know winning a penalty technically doesn't count, but I'm yeah. counting it for you. Mm -hmm. What have you been drinking for the last couple of days, and uh, can I have a shot of it? Yeah. I mean, uh, I think for me it's just been staying on track. Um, obviously, trusting myself, the off-season work and everything, and even starting off the season, obviously I didn't – wasn't contributing a lot. And obviously when I went to Austin and scored two goals, it kind of boosted my confidence. It's just the reality of being an athlete, you know, things like that can create, um, you know, that spark and stuff like that. So I just kind of been, you know, focusing and doing the right things and trusting myself as a player. And I know I can, you know, make things happen. And, um, you know, it just feels great to be able to do that today in a big game and, you know, move on into the semifinals of Open Cup, so. Means for for you and for the team to just have made it this far in this tournament and be able to go to the final four. Oh, it's huge. Uh, you know, it's always uh, if you're always uh, playing for something, uh, competing for a trophy. You know what I mean? Like uh, Open Cup is is a special tournament. Um, we have two more games, and we obviously want to lift the trophy this year uh, in in the MLS Cup as well. So um, you know, we have a great opportunity not be in the semis, and uh, hopefully we can be at home. Uh, you know, with our fan base, but yeah, you know, we, we're excited of hopefully being able to lift the cup. And speaking of the fan base, how good, how good did it feel to get a win in front of the home fans after, I mean, you guys get gotten some wins on the road, but a win at home hadn't come in a while. How did that feel? Yeah, uh, we, we talked about it all week. Um, you know, we kind of felt the pressure a little bit of being at home and not, you know, getting the results that we want. Um, but yeah, this feels good uh, going into uh, Saturday against, uh, you know, um, New York and, uh, yeah, so it just feels good to be, you know, have that fan base behind us, get that, that win that we needed, and, uh, you know, helps the team with confidence. Rubio, first off, congratulations. Coming into this one, you guys just lose at home last week to the Galaxy. Coming into this one, what do you guys do differently or what or prepare differently for this game after that loss? Oh, I think we just kind of worked on that transition. Uh, when Pew gets the ball, uh, we knew that uh, we needed to track him a little bit better. He's a very talented player, very good on the ball and stuff like that. So that was one of our main keys that we went and looked at film, uh, you know, know where Pew is, especially on transition. Uh, but yeah, I feel like uh, we knew that we could win this game um, and, uh, you know, just trusting each other and uh, making it happen on the field. Yeah. Hey Rubio, thank you for your time and congrats on the win. Um, throughout, I guess, the, the streak that you kind of had, the dry spell of, of not scoring goals, um, I guess how frustrating was that from a personal standpoint and how helpful was it to have your teammates and, and Pablo kind of in your corner batting for you? Uh, it's, it's everything. Um, you know, pro sports is like that. I don't think people realize, uh, you know, sometimes you go into these moments, you think about the goal, you think about it too much, messes with your head. It's just the reality and stuff like that, like anything in life. Uh, but yeah, just having Pablo, having the coaching staff, having my teammates, you know, telling me every day, just keep going, just keep going, keep fighting. You know, I had a really um, special moment with Dami. Dami messaged me after, I think, LAFC uh, when I didn't find the back of the net, and he just told me, keep going, man. You're a special player. You mean a lot to us. And I think just having, you know, a leader like him give me that motivation again. And, you know, it happened you know, three or four days ago, and then it happened today again with this, with this, with this team and stuff like that, and just kind of you know, continue to believe in myself, most importantly. Previously mentioned two games against Austin, and then this game you had technically two assists. Um, for, for your assists, your passing was on point in this game. Was there anything specifically you could, or that you found with the LA defense that they were kind of allowing you to do in the attacking third? Yeah, I know that uh, there was a lot of space in behind. Um, you know, kind of like Austin, uh, I felt like I could have run in behind them and create space and stuff like that. And I knew when I could make a couple runs and create that space up front that I could also get the ball underneath and stuff like that. So that kind of allowed me to go in behind in the first goal and then in the third goal be able to come underneath and you know dribble with the ball and stuff like that. So yeah, it just kind of you know moments that you feel it on the field and stuff. Thanks, Rubio. Yeah, of course. Uh, Rubio, eh, bueno, en lo personal me tocó verte jugar a ti en Sinaloa como fan, soy de allá, entonces sí. me tocó verte jugar en una posición diferente a lo que normalmente lo haces aquí. Uh -huh. eh, allá jugabas un poco más cargado a la banda, dabas uh -huh. más asistencias, aquí tu posición ha sido más en el área, pero uh -huh. hoy lo hiciste muy bien jugando también un poco más cargado hacia la derecha. Sí. ¿Te sientes más cómodo jugando en esa zona, tratando de ir más hacia la banda izquierda, banda derecha, o te gusta estar 
más en el centro? ¿Dónde te sientes más cómodo realmente? Sí, yo creo que el lado del centro, enfrente de la portería, eh, pero al mismo tiempo puedo correr por las bandas y todo eso. Depende todo el, como a veces estaba como se mete él también en esos espacios para meterme atrás y todo eso. Y solo practicamos los entrenamientos y todo eso para, para tener ese como la quema, para, para lograr estar enfrente de la portería, como en el primer gol y como el segundo gol y, y el tercer gol. Pero sí, eso es una quema que pues seguimos trabajando, conociendo. Ajá, sí. Rubio, estás con una confianza formidable, ¿no? Uh -huh. Dos goles, dos asistencias, se te ve que estás en... Quizás probablemente otra vez en el mejor momento de, de, de tu carrera. Sí, sí, no, 100%. Yo creo que, pues, como yo dije, el, el año pasado no fue un, un, un buen año para mí, en lo personal, pero al mismo tiempo, pues, así es la vida. No todas las veces vas a pasar por buenos momentos, a veces pasas por difíciles momentos y me tocó. Y, pues, ahorita, pues, yo quiero seguir trabajando con este equipo, seguir you know, ayudando al equipo en, en ganar partidos, que es muy importante y, pues, lograr levantar un trofeo que es algo que no en mi carrera nunca he logrado y que es algo especial so, um, vamos con todo y seguimos así qué cambió del miércoles este al, del pasado este para que se divirtiera digamos el resultado porque fue el mismo pero al revés no sí no yo creo que eso es lo que mencioné ahorita con Pew en la transacción tren, que tener un poquito más averiguado dónde está conociendo que él cuando agarra la pelota va me entiendes es un buen buen jugador y todo eso pero Uh, lo manejamos, yo creo que bien hoy en, en, en eso, um, cuando estamos atacando, sabiendo dónde está Pew y todo eso, y creo que eso nos ayuda mucho. John, ¿hay algo más de ti en Zoom? Just first home win for the club since April 22nd. Just talk about how important that is to reestablish yourself at home, especially with the New York City coming into a Salt Lake on Saturday. Oh, I think it's huge. Um, We know that uh, uh, we hadn't got the results at home. Uh, it's been a difficult spell at home and stuff like that. Uh, but we just had to come today and, you know, have the confidence, trust each other, and kind of have that momentum going into Saturday. So I think, uh, you know, obviously we got the job, do job done tonight. Uh, we can take a break now with Open Cup now that it's not until August, I think, right? And um, so now focus on the league and hopefully, uh, you know, get a, get a great win on, on Saturday as well. All right, thank you, everyone. Pablo, congrats on the win tonight. Thanks. Uh, up 3 nothing at one point in the game, Two goals allowed. What 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 went wrong totally right there? Um, no, it's 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 soccer, man. It's it's you you got to play the game and you got to be, um, you know. I think one having been a former player, when you concede on a PK, um, all of a sudden you start thinking about not losing instead of winning. That's a natural occurrence in any football players that's 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 on the field right and you want to preserve this in that back foot mindset you seed space on on Costa's goal where if it's zero zero we're going to have a pivot step out to that and, and deal with that space um on that play we didn't have that step and so now we open up lane and knowing that he's going to go to his left foot knowing that he scores that's that's his play that's what he does um that part's a little bit upsetting um but Again, I think you got to find ways, and I talked to the guys, you got to find ways to win games. Like, we can't stop it and call timeout. We can't, you know, and, and so just a little bit more composure in those moments um, where, you know, we have, there's, we're in injury time and we decide to play out of the back and everyone's up, up front waiting for a ball. And so I think it's, it's more psychological than it is anything else. And, and, and so the, the lesson learned from this game is, We got to keep playing the game, and you have to override the fear that you have of losing the game, and that's a difficult mechanism. But but again, you'll see it on offense with the lack of movement, people standing, um, and you'll see it on defense with people not moving their feet the right way. Um, and those are examples. But again, uh, these games happen all the time in football. Uh, you know, they say two zero is the most dangerous lead to have. You know, three zero is is also dangerous against a team like LA, who's who's got firepower. So, um, but again, credit to the guys for hanging in there. 
and, and grinding out uh, a deserved result. Oh, well, thank you for your time, and um, congrats on a really big win today. Um, obviously, Justin Glad was, was not available for, um, for the last game against LA Galaxy. That game was, was quite different. There were a lot of momentum changes last game, same with this game, just in different ways. Um, can you identify anything specifically different? I mean, up until the penalty was allowed, your team was, was really dominating the game up 3-0. Can, can you really identify or pinpoint anything that was different in this game? No. Um, like I always say, goals change games. And they change psychology. They change emotion. Um, and that's why goals are so important. Um, but, I, you know, again, they're a very good team that have players that, that you know, Puj has been um, – He's been really good in the last couple of games, and he's he is a difference maker. That it's he creates overloads in the wide areas, he creates overloads in the central areas, and defending him with one guy is very difficult. And so, um, but I think for the most part, um, we did a really good job. And uh, as far as you know, the difference in games, I, I think you know you when you're up, you got to manage the game better, um, and and that's what we didn't do in the last game. I think today, whilst we gave up two goals, we found a way to manage the game and get the result, which is which is an improvement from the last game. I think for m a majority of this game, you'd be pretty hard pressed to find major critiques on on most of the players' performances. A lot of guys playing very well in this game. Can you just talk about how proud you are of this team and how much it means to you and the team to make it to the semifinals of the, the U.S. Open Cup? Yeah, no, I think um, for me again, I think what was it, Trey? Last. Whatever six games we've we've seven or more players, seven or more players have been rotating for for every game and and again when we talk about team it's it's easy to say it um, but if those players don't step up and, and do the type of work and, and put the type of performances that, that that are worthy of getting results then that then you don't rotate right but everyone that stepped in um, some playing positions that they're not the most comfortable in but the chemistry of the group the confidence of the group um, and more importantly I, I think again. Um, you, there's a couple ways to look at results from a coaching perspective. A lot of times, you know, I come in here when we don't win, um, and to me, my brain is already thinking the things that we're going to work on to get better. To everyone else, it's the end of the world. And, and, and so what you see is a group of guys that are committed to getting better and, and a culture that, that thrives on improvement, that thrives on – yeah, it's emotional after the game. Guys are upset, coaches are upset, but the truth is, is like it's got to be controlled and it's got to be constructive. Um, if not, it's like babies throwing toys out of the pram. It, it doesn't make any sense, right? Um, but we've been able to then look at our performances, talk about it. Not much training, but really through video and, and walkthroughs on on you know the, the the day before games, and 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 figure out as a collective how we want to improve the different areas of our game. And, and today, from an attacking perspective, I think we've come a long way from, from game one, two, three. Um, there's a great exhibition of football out there. The guys up front were fantastic. The guys in the middle were great. The guys in the back, um, decisions by Gav were really good. And so I'm really proud of this group. I, I think we have a ways to go. Um, it'd be naive to say, because we got the result, we're a, a finished product. Uh, again, win or lose, it doesn't matter. We want to improve. and so. Um, but I think the, the foundation that this group is setting on both sides of the ball is, is a standard that we want to uphold. And the only way to uphold it is to get better. Pablo, up to this point, you guys have played every Open Cup game away from home. How, what did it feel to just come back here at home, play, be able to play this game in front of the fans and to get the win in front of the fans? Yeah, no, it's, it's been important. Obviously, it's been weighing heavy on us, um, you know, not getting the results at home that, that we'd like. Um, and... It was fantastic. A lot of Open Cup matches. Um, there's not a lot of crowd at some of these venues. Um, and what's special about you know AFF is is the passion, is the stadium full. Um, you know, and credit to uh, you know John Kimball and, and his staff for for filling out the stadium. Um, but it means a lot to the players. And and again, I think um, the the game of football is is played with passion and emotion. Um, and the conduit to all that are the fans. And you want to do everything you can to put forth a, a very nice performance. But more importantly, the last taste you get in your mouth leaving any sporting event is, did they win? Um, and to have those two things in front of our fans after not playing a home game was really important for us tonight. Uh, I want to ask you specifically about, specifically about Rubio Rubin. Coming into this one, 
you know, he gets this, he gets the two goals in Austin. He gets the two assists tonight. What have, have you seen anything different from him in training, or just is it just the boost of confidence after getting the two goals? That's what it is. There's nothing different. He trains. He trains like he does all the time. And and I've said this in the past about strikers. Um, it, there's a lot to do with confidence in front of the net. And when you're scoring goals, the goal is two inches wide, two feet wider and about 10 feet higher. Um, when you're not scoring goals, it's like trying to score in a trash can. It's, it's so difficult, you know? And so uh, I think it, it, it's, it's a symbiotic relationship, right? The player never stops um, doing what he does and scoring goals and training like he's done all year. And the coaches see that, and they reciprocate by continuing to give him opportunities. And so I couldn't be happier for, for Rubio. He's uh, a fantastic teammate, a team player. Um, and now he's putting points on the board, which is you know, unbelievable for his career, but more importantly, unbelievable for this group. And I have to ask, after the two goals from LA, was there any kind of nerves from the team? Was there any nerves from the bench? It, or did you, did you have that faith that you guys would pull it off? Uh, yeah, I, I, we're all human beings. So whatever you felt as a fan, um, we feel times 100, right? And, and again, I think the psychological part is we don't want to let the fans down. We don't want to let each other down. We don't want to let the group down. And, you know, after the second goal, then it's like you got to reset and you got to find a way. And I, I think we got to be more vocal as a group in those moments where we're, we're smacking each other on the sides of the heads with our voices to keep us tuned in because your brain starts going into what if this happens, what if this happens? And, and how do we stay present in those moments? So, of course, I think we all feel um, we're all human. Uh, we all want to win. Um, and at times, we're all scared to lose. And so uh, I, I think it's more about how do we use this moment um, to learn from and, and make better decisions, in particular with the ball, because I felt like def def we, we defended well. But then when we got the ball, there was a lack of movement, a lack of, uh, of, of movement up front that didn't, that didn't allow us to, to move our group up the field. And we just kind of settled into a defensive shape, which in the end it worked. But again, there was some harrowing moments in there. Pablo, enhorabuena. Porque mm, lo, lo, lo comentamos el otro día, uno ya tiene ganas viendo fútbol. Y sinceramente, ver a veintitantos jugadores a ese nivel, como están compitiendo, como estás rotando y el equipo se mantiene a un nivel de competición tan alto, eso no es nada fácil verlo. Y, y, y yo te alabo ese trabajo porque realmente es, es espectacular. Gracias. Hoy es consecuencia, la victoria consecuencia de eso. Pero la, mi pregunta es, ¿qué cambió del miércoles pasado a este para que hay, él se perdiera y ahora se ganara? Es decir, ¿dónde crees tú que estuvo la clave? Pues eh, el partido en el miércoles eh, contra Los Ángeles eh, el miércoles pasado, yo creo que eh, no está, cuando, cuando marcamos el segundo gol, no estuvimos enchufados del peligro que existe como un grupo. Y, y estamos, perdimos el balón en, en lugares muy difíciles y como un grupo no, no entendimos cómo, cómo manejar el momento, el marcador. Hoy día nos pasó casi igual, pero al fin encontramos la manera de, de, de estar unidos en, mom en momentos difíciles. Habían varias jugadas de corner, de, de, de defensiva, el Cheng, el Bori, uh, hicieron muy buen trabajo en los últimos cinco minutos para preservar la, el marcador. Y yo creo que, y, y, y vos sabés, Carlos, que el fútbol es, es una cosa impresionante porque uno lo podemos trabajar, lo podemos mirar sobre el video, pero cuando está en la cancha, la emoción a veces te... te te, sobre, te, te sobrecarga y, y perder la lógica del trabajo que uno debe ser. Pero estoy muy contento para el, los, los pibes, los, el grupo, eh, porque este partido fue muy importante para seguir con la confianza que, que hemos tenido en, en los últimos partidos. Sí, porque el nivel para mí fue exactamente igual de, de dominante en, en los dos partidos. Una última pregunta. Mm, toca Houston ahora, hay que elegir, digamos, entre comillas, casa o fuera, ¿qué prefieres? ¿La final en casa y semifinal fuera o semifinal en casa y la final fuera? Ambos en casa. Ah, ambos en casa. Ambos en casa, sí, no, pero yo, yo creo que eh, si tengo que elegir, pre prefiero el, el semifinal aquí en casa, porque ya cuando está en un final, tener la misma presión si está en casa o de visitante.
Lo importante es llegar y tener la oportunidad para levantar una copa. Eso, ok. Ustedes van a estar eh, eh, re contentos. Bueno, este, Pablo, de verdad, voy a repetir lo que dije alguna vez, es difícil ser el último porque ya te ganan todas las preguntas. <risa> Pero igual, me, me gusta verte sonreír ahorita mismo porque te, te he visto muy serio y, y me gustó cuando dijiste, me siento contento por los muchachos que, que están. Pero al inicio te vi como que no tan contento, a pesar de que pasaste a la semifinal, eh, medio frustrado. ¿Es por los últimos minutos? Eh, no, porque yo me, como, como entrenador me gusta, me gusta los partidos que son aburridos. Cuando hay tanto, tanta emoción es porque el partido está muy parejo. Si ganamos ese partido 3-0, entro tranquilo, a, eh, todo, todos dicen que partido es lindo, ganaron, pero un poco aburrido porque ganaron 3-0. Eso prefiero. Cuando el partido termina 3-2, yo sé que la gente, la, la afición le encanta porque es un partido interesante, pero como entrenador prefiero un partido bien aburrido que controlamos los momentos difíciles y salimos con la victoria. Tranquila. La última, nada más. Yo sé que el tiempo gana. ¿Te ilusiona jugar una final, sea aquí o allá, con Messi? Porque para ese entonces ya Messi va a estar jugando. Probablemente lo ponen a jugar para Inter Miami asegurar lo que es la Champions. Porque yo creo que de repente no aspiran a la Liga, pero tienen, si es que avanzan, tienen una gran oportunidad de pasar a la Champions. Y tanto para Real y para Inter sería fabuloso. Sí, no, para mí... Eh, yo creo que para los pibes le encantarán eh, jugar contra Messi. Como entrenador, lo único que estoy pensando es que nos faltan dos partidos para, para recibir la copa, para levantar la copa. Y eso, si, si no sé quién es Cincinnati le gana a, a Miami, perfecto. O sea, si Miami lo gana, perfecto. Lo importante para mí como entrenador es que, lo, que los muchachos han, han puesto un esfuerzo en un, en, un, en un momento muy difícil con tanto partido, uno detrás del otro, y ahora está, tenemos un poco de tiempo para concentrarnos en la liga, pero en agosto viene la oportunidad de estar un paso más cerca de levantar una copa. Gracias. Bueno. Thank Thanks, hermano. Thank you. Thank you. Hey John, we'll start with you on Zoom if you've got anything for Dami. Just talk about it seemed like the overall aggression and aggressiveness of the team is exactly what you needed tonight. Got out to that big lead and then obviously they came back with the two goals, but you guys were able to hold on. So you You have to be happy with the way you have, you at least started and played the first like 80 minutes up until LA got the couple. Yeah, I think uh, overall uh, it was great performance. Unfortunately, uh, you know we um, complicated a little bit last 10 minutes. Uh, you know the things, but at the end of the day, the most important thing that we found the game to to win the game, and that's all about. I think it was pretty similar to game as uh, as the last week. Uh, you know where we created so many chances. Uh, you know. Um, I mean, got a, got a lead, and then, uh, you know, I mean, this this game, I think we handle <coughs> handle much better, you know, their transition game because uh, we know how much uh, you know they are um, good in transition, especially because of uh, Ricky, uh, you know, and his quality. But we handled it very well, and uh, I think uh, we deserved uh, to win tonight, and uh, you know, to get us into the semifinals. Thank you for your time and congrats on the big win. Um, you got this team going with, with two goals in this game. How does it feel to show up for the fans at home today, get two goals, and more importantly, the win? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was for us, you know, huge opportunity, uh, you know, playing a uh, Youth Open Cup uh, game home after, you know, like uh, three road games. And, you know, the fans, mm, they, you know, well deserved, uh, um, you know, final this win, you know, we were waiting for, for a long time. And now we got it, and we have to keep going. We have to stay humble to go, especially in Open Cup, you know, game by game. 
it is uh, for the six, six so far. We have another two to come. Uh, but now it's all focus uh, for New York CFC. Uh, you know we wanna uh, you know get third win in a row to keep uh, you know building momentum. Uh, you know and uh, to put us uh, in a, in a great spot. Uh, you know uh, to believe that uh, we can uh, read something special. The second goal that you scored was a penalty, and that was RSL's first penalty all year. Um, was there was there some conversation on kind of who was going to take the penalty or? Or was that kind of decided? I mean, we have so many, you know, uh, great uh, PK uh, takers in team. Um, you know, it was, uh, you know, um, Rubio, between Rubio, myself, and then Pablo. But then we, uh, you know, uh, got uh, along, uh, you know, and uh, I asked if I can take it. So uh, all was good. You know, I think it's it's team win. It's not, uh, you know, about one guy, about two guys or three guys. It's about, uh, you know, 40 guys. So it's not only the players, it's everyone included. And this is how you know build the culture standard, and uh, you know this is what make uh, this uh, this group very strong. Thanks so much. Dom. Thank you. Appreciate it. Dami, mean, first of all, congratulations on the win. Last week, LA was here, and um, it ended in a defeat. Did you guys do anything differently heading into this one? Did you guys prepare any differently heading into this one um, to in order to get the win here at home against LA? Definitely. Uh, you know, like uh, either I think uh, you know we have. I mean, we deserved. Uh, to get three points last week as well, you know, just like we were not uh, focused enough, uh, uh, you know, in two moments, in two little moments, which, uh, you know, turned into big moments uh, uh, when they scored two goals. And because of that, uh, I said before that uh, we handled these situations uh, tonight uh, much better, uh, you know, even like um, they scored two goals. But uh, at the end of the day, as I said before, the most important thing, we found a way uh, this time to, to, to win. Thank you. Damian, I, I hope I'm not asking anything too personal here, but Rubio's having a moment right now with between Ad Austin and then the, the two assist tonight, setting up the PK, all that. He mentioned that the two of you kind of had a little bit of a moment, I guess, as he was struggling to find the back of the net and, and that kind of thing. Can you share anything about just sort of what you shared with him that obviously it's worked, like I'll have whatever he's drinking right now and you probably want some of it too? You know, it's... Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, I know that Rubio is, you know, a hard worker. Uh, you know, uh, he put, uh, you know, uh, himself uh, into the team, and uh, you know, even like he deserves uh, so many goals this season. You know, unfortunately, it didn't make it happen till Austin, and you know, I'm so happy because of him, because of his performance against Austin, because of his performance uh, tonight. Uh, you know, we know uh, each other, uh, you know, along, uh, you know, we play along uh, next to each other 2021. So he had the best season of his career. I had the best season of my career. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, Danny uh, got yesterday injured and, uh, you know, uh, Rubio got uh, into the team. So we were, you know, share a couple of uh, messages, uh, you know, yes, afternoon. Let's get back to 2021, uh, you know, and it worked uh, tonight very well. But as I said, it's not about one, two guys. It's about like uh, all of us. And, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, grateful to be his teammate, to, you know, to be part of this team. And uh, we keep going. That's all about. How nice was that pass on that first goal that he set up for you? Yeah, it was unbelievable. Uh, you know, it wasn't like, uh, you know, a uh, hard job for me. Uh, you know, it was great assist and, you know, I'm looking forward for, for more of, the, of those. Damir, when the game was over, uh, did you feel happier or relieved with the result? Happy, you know, uh, because especially I don't know how, um, you know, games we didn't win at home. I would say like four or five game games in, in a row. And uh, even if we deserve that, we didn't uh, win. And because of that, uh, you know, the most important thing in football, in soccer, is to find a way to get three points. I know it was a little bit frustrated last, uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes when you concede two goals. And actually, you know, till 80th minute, you deserve this clean sheet and to win even like three, four, zero. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, this win uh, get us through, and that's all about. Uh, you know, I mean, of course, we're going to see our mistakes, especially these 15 minutes, uh, what we could do better in the future, uh, you know, where, how we can improve us. And, um, you know, other than that, uh, you know, two wins in a row. Austin was, uh, you know, tough one, uh, you know, tough game, but we made it. Uh, tonight was tough and we made it, so we just uh, have to keep building. Damir, el, el equipo está compitiendo a un nivel altísimo, en mi opinión, y además 20 jugadores o 21 jugadores. 
tú que tienes esa experiencia, eso no es normal en el fútbol y en un equipo verlo, tantos jugadores y estando a tan buen nivel. Y mi pregunta también es, eh, la segunda pregunta es, ¿cómo estás tú? ¿Ya estás al 100% físicamente? Are you at 100% physically? How is that going? And also, his second part to that was the team is competing at a high level, at least 20 to 21 players on the team all competing really great. Not something you typically see in a team, so many players having such good such good progress and performances. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm feeling, uh, you know, great, actually, you know, 100% um, since, uh, you know, I would say last three, four months, uh, you know, and uh, especially I would say in two, three days, it's going to be two months since we're playing uh, like the games uh, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday. And, uh, you know, every single player showed up, uh, showed great performances, uh, you know, and this is, I think, uh, great, uh, you know, happiness for the coach staff. Uh, I think, uh, you know, when you change every single, uh, you know, game, eight to nine players and everyone is, uh, you know, putting great performances, then it means, uh, you know, that we have like a great team, you know, great squad and, uh, you know, everyone is ready to step up and, uh, you know, Um, this is uh, the, the, the biggest strength of this team uh, and um, you know now it's uh, the, 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 the time that uh, you know put us uh, even more together and uh, in a season to get the best results as, as we can. Thank you guys. Have a good evening. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. Uh, NYCFC is not the only team I, I cover. There are a couple of other teams on Salt Lake schedule that I do, like St. Louis and the Red Bull. So maybe we could get in touch then about other opportunities. Yeah, of course. Um, you can reach out. My phone number is 407-341-1905. Okay, great. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it.